All right, good morning. I want to do a review of this thing. People have seen this in my videos many times. It's the keyboard I use. This is a uh, Unicomp Endura Pro keyboard. I've had this for, I guess, the beginning of, since the beginning of 2019. I guess that's nearly been two years now. And I want to do a review on this because it is a keyboard like no other in many respects. I have lots of good things to say about it. Lots of uh, well, not lots, but some bad things that I think are worth knowing, but uh, this is a great... I'll, I'll go ahead and explain... Uh, well, first off, look at the notable design. There's actually a reason for the fact that it's colored black, but all the keys are gray. Maybe I'll get into that. So Unicomp, the company that makes these, this is actually one of the only keyboards that you can get that's actually made in the United States. Now, I know people have this idea that things made in the U.S. have to be like hyper expensive or 30 times more expensive than the stuff in China. This probably isn't actually the case. This keyboard cost me around uh, $100, a little bit more than that, which if you compare to mechanical keyboards, that's basically, honestly a lot cheaper than mechanical keyboards. Now, first off, this is not a mechanical keyboard. You look at it, it looks like one. It clicks sort of like one, but it isn't. A lot of people will see that, oh, it's a mechanical keyboard. No, it's actually a buckling spring keyboard. And that means if you actually open these keys up, they have a little hole with a spring in it. And when you press the keys, the, the spring actually buckles and it makes this really loud noise here. Okay, so it doesn't have mechanical switches. It's not exactly like uh, what you might be used to if you have a mechanical keyboard. Now, this keyboard is in fact based on the old IBM Model M keyboard. Okay, um, and that is, I, I often considered the best keyboard ever made. It looked about like this, except for it was, you know, plain, you know, a plain gray color or beige color. Um, and those used to be made by a company called Lexmark. I, I think it's Lex, Lexmark. Uh, I think IBM maybe owned them or something like that. It doesn't really matter, but they used to be focused or, or centered in Kentucky. Now, what ended up happening is that IBM or Lexmark, whoever it is, I forget. Um, I, I, th I think it was both. Who, who knows? You can look it up, it doesn't, doesn't actually matter. Um, they decided to move, uh, you know, source their production out to China, okay, to save, save a buck. And the people who built these in Kentucky, they said, you know what, we actually really like the classical Model M keyboards. We want to make keyboards like it, so we are going to buy the intellectual property and the business and the, the architecture, and we're going to keep making these keyboards in the United States. So you can still get these. They are reasonably priced compared to everything else. And in fact, look at mine. Okay. I actually have the Endura Pro model. It has, look at that, there's a track point with little mouse keys as well. So you can actually use this thing as a mouse. I, I have used it as a mouse for two years. I don't own a mouse. Or maybe I own a mouse. If I do, it's in a closet. I'm never going to use it. I don't use a mouse. I don't have a mouse that I plug up to my computer. I just use this thing. So that is one thing that's fantastic about it. I just have this on my desk and my screen, and that's all I need. Okay, it's nice nice and simple. I mean, if you guys know my... my uh, uh, computer setup and, and my Linux setup, I basically do not use a mouse except for if I'm doing something very particular in the web browser or if I'm making, I guess, the thumbnails to my videos, if I make them in GIMP, I have to use a mouse. Um, but uh, this is fantastic. This works for everything else. Um, so, first off, why uh, the goods, I, I guess, the information about this company. So, Unicomp, again, is the name of the company that, that bought the IP and the, the, uh, manu the, the, the factory that makes these in Kentucky. Um, one of the goods and bads of it is it, it's, a, it ha, it's a very, I guess, um, I, I don't want to say mom and pop level, but it's sort of a low level. It's not too big, uh, but they also have a lot of old equipment. So you'll see reviews of this keyboard where people say, oh, there are minor manufacturing uh, defects because a lot of times they're using really old equipment. Now, in my case, I have a little bit of that that I can complain about. Um, now, first off, I don't know if this is a universal problem, but my track point does not work how it should be working ideally. Okay, specifically what it does is, I mean, no, if you're just using, using it, moving around just a little bit, it'll work fine. But if you do something, am I off focus? I can't, I can't really tell. Um, uh, but if you, like, really move it around quickly and stuff like that, it actually moves faster if you move it to the left than if you move it to the right. Or it moves faster if you're going up rather than going down. Something really weird that I think is a mechanical defect. Um, and I've thought about, I've looked at ways in Linux to mitigate this. I haven't really found a, a good way to do it. It might just be an error in the particular keyboard that I got. Uh, there might have just been a little manufacturing flaw in it. 
Um, if it's a universal thing, that's a little worrisome. Uh, if it's not a universal thing, hey, Unicom, could you send me a new keyboard? That would actually be nice. I'm sorry, it's been two years since I bought this thing, but I'm, I'm just asking. Now, obviously, it gets, I get along fine with it. I've been using it and nothing else for the past two years, so uh, I have no big complaints, but that was something I noticed very quickly when I started using it. And additionally, I, I guess just when I busted it out of the box, um, there were little mechanic, like for example, sometimes I'd press a key, like I, I think the grav accent was sort of messed up when I first got it. So I would like press it and it would keep held down and I tried cleaning, the, taking the key off and cleaning it up and it, it, you know, it persisted for a little bit, but eventually it just sort of stopped. And I think that was the case with uh, one, or other, one or two other keys. But nowadays I haven't, I mean, I haven't had any problems with those in the past couple of years at all, in the past year and a half or so, since, I, since the first couple months of me having it. Okay, so another question is why, why does it look like this? Why is it black with uh, gray keys? That's maybe an interesting question. Oh, by the way, they also have little Linux keys that you can buy. Um, they have a little pack of replacement keys that you can get for Linux. And they, I think they also, I think it's targeted to Emacs users as well because they give you a key that replaces uh, the um, caps lock with a control, uh, which would be nice if you're an Emacs user. I would really like caps lock replaced with escape since I use Vim. Uh, so that's what I have remapped. Uh, but what was I going to say? So why, why is it colored like this? Well, it's colored like this because when Unicomp, you know, bought all the old machinery, they did not, they don't have the equipment to put, you know, if you wanted a full black uh, keyboard, they don't have the equipment to write uh, white letters on those uh, keycaps. So they actually don't sell, like if you want a black keyboard, this is as close as you're going to get. You can also get one that's totally black, including the keys, that has unmarked keys. But that's just uh, sort of an interesting thing about the development, you know, they haven't been able to buy new machinery or something like that. Uh, which, uh, again, is a little worrisome, but it's also nice to, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm not going to fault them for that. I mean, this is a very, it's one of those interesting, you know, design from uh, your limitation kind of things. I, I like the way it looks. There are no keyboards that look like it. I, I don't think it looks ugly um, uh, or anything. I think it's just very notable. People usually see it and they're like, oh, wow, what's that? That's, that's pretty cool. Um, and I will say that also, if you get the Endura Pro model, I don't know if I made it clear, but the Endura Pro model is the one specifically with the track point. If you want one without a track point, that's actually a little bit cheaper. It's maybe, I mean, this is maybe a little bit more than $100. Uh, the one without the track point is maybe right at $100, maybe a little less. Um, you can also get ones with like track balls, like you, you a little mouse ball that you can move around up here. And uh, they have other things as well. You also have the choice of what kind of cord you want. I, of course, got USB. Um, you can get a PS2 connection if you want, but the thing is, if you get a PS2 connection with the Endura Pro, that, of course, is a mouse and a keyboard built into each other, uh, you're going to have two connectors because you can't just, one of them doesn't just work. So, uh, in the case of the USB, though, they can, bo both your mouse and keyboard can come off of this, so this is the only plug-in that I need. So, it's very nice. It, it actually saves me another plug-in of my USB on, uh, on my computer. Very nice having them. Um, so I, I sort of recommend, I definitely recommend this uh, product. I will say that, you know, it is, of course, very loud. Um, if you're new to it, that might be a, oh, no, it's loud. I'm, I'm afraid of that. Um, I, I don't know. I don't even think it's, and there's no, I know there are ways in mechanical keyboards of sort of mitigating the loudness. Uh, I don't know of any way of doing that on a buckling spring keyboard, but I don't really care because um, it's honestly not bad. I've even, when I first got this, I was living with a roommate and, uh, you know, she was never really bothered by the sound. And um, uh, I, I think even when I record videos, I record videos usually with my microphone pretty close and I don't think the keyboard is like that in the way. Sometimes if I have my microphone right in front of the keyboard, you can usually tell uh, because the key presses will be a little louder. Uh, but they're never, unless, I, unless I'm asking people do they hear it, they won't hear it, you know what I mean? So it's not, it's not a big distraction. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But it is basically impossible to hit these keys. Uh, softly without them making noises because like this the spring has the buckle like it has to make noise um, so but I mean that's sort of the same in mechanical keyboards as well uh, they basically have to make noise uh, so yeah I, de I definitely recommend this thing it's unique it's a nice way again it's not it's not cheap Chinese stuff it's pretty cheap American stuff that is relatively well made again there might be little defects um, uh, again my track point I was a little fuzzy about, but if you're worried about that and you don't care about a track point, maybe you could just get their default model. Uh, they have many different colors and, and different schemes for this. Just uh, They have different models. They do different clever things with them. They're worth checking out. Again, the company is Unicomp. Um, so, 
Yeah, that's about, I mean, considering how little I paid for this, just a, a little over a hundred bucks, I think it's a great deal. And uh, it's in great shape. I've cleaned it maybe once. Uh, maybe I should have cleaned it before the video. There's a bunch of junk in there, but um, all right, so that's about it. Yeah.